All right, so let's have a little conversation about PayPal Checkout. Today, I decided that I wanted to learn more about PayPal Checkout and exactly how it works. So I decided I was going to create my own environment and I was going to set up the PayPal Checkout and then I would know exactly how it works and if something's configured wrong, I'd be able to see it in a JavaScript file and I would know right away if there was going to be vulnerabilities in the code. And guess what? It did in fact work and I'm going to show that to you today. But before I show you how to identify these types of vulnerabilities in the JavaScript, I feel like just something needs to be said to PayPal themselves. When you read documentation, which I had to read a ton of documentation from PayPal, the documentation is kind of like the company's love letter to developers. And I just want to say from PayPal, I do not feel loved at all. As I was reading through the documentation, it kind of reminded me like if I took all of the Harry Potter books, all seven of them, and we mixed up all the chapters and we put them all into one book, and the first chapter is from book one, and the second chapter is from book seven, and the third chapter is from book six, and it was just all jumbled together, that's kind of what the documentation felt like. And maybe that's just my inexperience in working with PayPal, but it just seemed all jumbled up to me, and it was really hard to work through. And with that said, their documentation only shows you how to implement this on the client side, which is dangerous. And then also with Node.js, and there's about 10 different ways they show you to use Node.js. And then they always say, this isn't going to work. You're going to have to figure it out on your own. And if you use Java, PHP, Ruby, or any other server side language, good luck. You are on your own. They show you the Node.js and say, here's kind of an example. Have fun trying to get it to work. So I took to Stack Overflow, which is the place where developers go in order to read from other developers and understand how to implement this in their own server side language. And there was a ton of questions and a lot of people really struggling. And when Stack Overflow is failing, the place to go to is Reddit. And this is where the fun starts to happen. And I seen people writing, I can't get this to work with the server side sanitization, forget it. I'm just going to implement this on the client side and we'll just obfuscate the code. And I thought that's pretty dangerous because it's really easy to identify where the payment is coming from and going in the client side JavaScript. And you'll be able to edit it really simply. But it is really, really simple to use just the client side JavaScript in order to get this to work. So I want to go ahead and show you a couple of tips now on how to identify this. So here we are on PayPal and the way that you add the buttons, I really got to say they did a great job. I expected everything with PayPal, no matter what the language is due to the size of the company to be just kind of a copy paste and change your IDs and some keys and it would automatically work, which is how it should be. But to add the buttons, that is pretty much it. You just copy in this script right here. You guys don't really care. And then you'll add in a div and you will call it right here. So you'll add an ID. And the JavaScript right here is going to render the buttons on the page. So you would use this right here to render this pretty simple so far, but here's where it gets dangerous. So this is client side right here and you have the value. You just change the amount that you want to charge. So let's say if somebody buys something for, let's say you have this set to $10 instead of one penny, then it's going to go ahead and complete the transaction. But what you can do is intercept this and you can change this value right here to be something else. So I have never in bug bounty hunting tested the PayPal checkout because I automatically assumed that PayPal was going to be super secure. They're this huge company. I mean, all they do is deal with money. I figured they had it on lockdown real tight. But as I said today, the developers were getting frustrated and some of them, usually those on Reddit, which is not where you go for your development information uh, just said forget it we're just going to run this because it's easy so if you see something like this right here even if the code is obfuscated you're going to be able to tell right away that this is client side and you're going to be able to mess with it and usually you can find the javascript files just by looking at the robots.txt it'll usually be like a disallow for google and you'll be able to find the javascript files and you can look through those or you can inspect and see if you can find the javascript that way also, but I just wanted to show you, I guess I opened up the docs over here. This is where PayPal sends you. And so this is the server side code right here. And if we come over here, we can see that we have the value being dealt with over here. And here's the public folder. So if you close this, it's not going to be getting rendered over on the public side. So they wouldn't be able to see the amount right there and be able to deal with that. This is a whole nother bit that we're not going to talk about because this is a bug bounty video. So if you wanted to find this in bug bounty, we are here on integrity. Let's say you were scrolling through and you were looking for some program and you wanted to open up this one looks great and this one as well. What you could do is you could open these up, visit the actual page down here, and we'll just do one of these. 
you visit it and it loads. And let's say we found a PayPal checkout. What we could do is just come up to Wappalizer. We would say, oh, look, they're using Node.js. So with Node.js, they're probably going to be implementing it very similar to what we see right here. And you can look for this PayPal API.js. They probably haven't named something else. If not, you could look for like an index.js or a scripts.js and see if they are rendering this on the client side and if you can mess with it. And also, if you have another program like this one right here, let's say we want to visit this program, we could do the same thing and look at Wappalizer and see what they're using. This is using PHP, so we know that they probably had to write this code all on their own, and we could do the same thing and think maybe they got tired of dealing with it and they just stored the JavaScript on the client side. And I always assumed that PayPal checkout was really secure, not realizing until today when I was messing with it that it is really up to the developer to secure the payment process. So with that, let me know if you have any questions down below. And if I'm wrong, that is very possible because I am not an expert at dealing with PayPal checkout. The last couple of days have been the first time I have really ever messed with PayPal checkout. And I noticed today that people were implementing insecure code. And I just wanted to let you know as bug bounty hunters that it is up to the developers and you should be looking for this. Thanks for watching.